IPv4 addresses are broken into classes, A, B, C, D. There's some others that we don't need to worry about. The classes are easily identifiable by looking at that first decimal number, the first octet in the address. If it's between 1 and 126, that's at least originally a class A address and uses the classful mask 255000. By the way, eight ones, eight binary ones, translates to decimal 255. So you can think of the mask very much like a real mask would if you took a mask like a bandana and covered half your face. That's how I envision when you overlay a mask on an IP address, you're serving to mask or separate two parts of the address. Once again, that's a separation between the network and the host portion of the address. Now, classful means that those classes are divided at octet boundaries. So a class B address uses a 255.255.00 mask, and the first octet goes from 128 to 191. Class C, that's a 24-bit network. The mask is 255, 255, 255, and the first octet is 192 to 223. And class D addresses have a first octet value of 224 to 255, and those are used in IP multicasting. Multicasting is a way to save network bandwidth by instead of sending data from host to host, you can send data to a single target address and have multiple targets sharing that same receiving address. That can be useful during video or teleconferences where bandwidth may be at a premium. The loopback address is a reserved IPv4 address. There's actually IPv4 and IPv6 loopbacks. You need to know that the IPv4 loopback is 127.0.0.1, and this is used for diagnostics. It's a good idea when you're testing connectivity to do a ping on 127.0.0.1. If you get replies, then at least you can have a sanity check that the TCP IP protocol stack works on that machine. Now, whereas classful addressing is divided into A, B, C, D, etc. and the networks are divided at bit boundaries first octet second octet third octet you can actually do CIDR or classless interdomain routing or classless addressing to do a network break at any bit boundary this is useful when you create subnets when you're starting with a large pool of addresses and you want to subdivide it into separate smaller networks to partition out your network for performance and security reasons now when you do classless addressing you give the network address which in this example 192.168.0.0 forward slash 19 that tells us that we're starting with what looks like a default class B shape where the first 16 bits are the network network ID and the zeros just refer generically to the network itself but instead of doing a slash 16 or 255.255 mask if we do a slash 19 which means that we're using the first 19 bits of that address to do networks then that's going to change the subnet mask that we're going to use to 255 255 244 and if you do the mask and if you do the math I should say that will give you instead of just one great big pool of addresses you'll get eight separate sub networks each supporting up to 80 190 hosts per subnet. Again, the reason why you might want to do this, called subnetting, is for performance reasons and for organization reasons and security reasons.